Hello and welcome to Homescreen. I'm Joe Colchester, Product Manager here at 11FS Pulse. Joining me today is Ali McManus, Senior Designer here at 11FS um, within the consulting team. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking about gamification in financial products um, and how it can be used to improve the experience for users. How are you doing today, Ali? I'm good, thanks, Coach. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Um, so just to give a bit of background, Ali is actually going to be joining us um, as a host here um, on Home Screen. So we're, we're very glad to be having you soon, but for now, you're just the, the guest. Um, can you confirm that you'll be growing your hair like everyone, all the other hosts so far? I, I will be growing my hair, yes. Um, it is obviously a prerequisite for the role. And if I can do anything to fill the considerable shoes of Jim Safford, then I will be uh, doing quite the job, so yeah. It, that's uh, that's in the pledge then. Uh, good to get that one. Um, so let's just talk about gamification. Um, let's start with um, just explaining what it is really. Yeah, sure. Um, so gamification is essentially just bringing gaming elements into uh, a non-gaming environment, be it product or services. Um, now, this is often misinterpreted as turning apps or products into games themselves. That's absolutely not what this is. It's just about bringing some of those little fun elements into some of the more not mundane, but maybe some of the functions of that particular product or service that lack any immediacy or appeal. So, yeah. Okay, and, and in terms of um, uh, in financial services, where are we starting to see that commonly? Um, I think we've started to see it quite commonly in investments and savings in particular. They're obviously common examples of, of Robinhood, but also some different um, more sort of financial management apps like, um, like Mint, um, but it's also starting to appear in places such as credit scoring or even basic transactions. Um, if you look at the way that Cash App celebrates simple money transfers, there's almost like this strange, um, even to us, it seems quite uh, over the top, but like a celebration of stuff um, within Cash App in the US. Like people love that brand and it's because of those tiny little gamified moments of very simple functions. Yeah, for sure. I think you, you do really start seeing a lot of that. Um, the lots of confetti, um, lots yeah. of loud, vibrant screens, not necessarily always meaning it's it's um, gamification, but it kind of plays into that playful aspect that we're seeing a lot at the moment. Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, and in terms, of, we're going to we're going to touch on a few of them later, but um, can you just outline a couple of the techniques being used um, uh, for gamification at the moment? Yeah, sure. Um, there's quite a few. I think the most common ones are probably um, sort of arbitrary um, achievements and rewards. So things like point systems, scoring systems, scoring streaks, and then also as well, just celebrating uh, basic progression. So setting a journey, whether it be a savings goal or um, an investment target or things like that, and just celebrating the moments along the way and milestones um, seems to um, increase user engagement and be quite rewarding. Yeah. Um, so talking about rewarding and increasing engagement, um, do you think that when it comes to the investment space, uh, that can be taken too far or it's a, it's a worrying trend in some instances? I think it can be. I think people that are designing for investments need to be really cautious about striking the right balance between fun and tone. You need to be able to provide any fun elements of there. You need to be able to accompany that with good levels of contextual information so that people really do understand the consequences of what they are doing. Mm -hmm. There's a real risk of making it too fun and making it not seem real. That's yeah. often the case with digitized money and uh, fintech in particular. You really do need to be uh, careful to stress the importance of any consequences that might be negative to the end user. Absolutely. Um, and um, especially how um, kind of gamified the whole investment space has become recently um, with meme stocks, um, lots of social yeah. media surrounding it. Um, it's, it's already adding a lot of fun and hype around it. So the last thing you need is is um, endless rewards um, and further incentives to um, to use your money perhaps unwisely. Um, Definitely. Yeah. Um, and um, in terms of saving savings products, um, also it's a, it's a key area that we're going to touch on later as well. Yeah. Um, but can there be um, uh, gamify kind of gamification used in those instances? Um, and if so, are there any downfalls of that? Um, I think they definitely can be used. Um, I think we're starting to see some of them being used with, uh, um, as you said, we're going to touch on later, we're seeing sort of streaks and point-based things um, being associated with saving now. There's a really interesting idea from years ago um, 
Rory Sutherland, who's the uh, head of Ogilvy One, which is the behavioural part of um, the advertising agency Ogilvy, had a suggestion in one of his TED Talks that um, if you were to be able to impulse save in the same way that people put in the effort to try and get people to impulse buy, mm -hmm. it's a really interesting idea and what would happen if people all of a sudden stopped spending as much and started saving more from an economic standpoint. I think it's a really interesting thing to explore as savings products become very visible now because they're there on your devices and your phone uh, rather than being something that's locked away in a bank that you just put money into every month. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the best examples that we've seen of those savings products um, do use um, gamification in some way. Yeah. Um, we're we're going to actually start things off, though, um, with a slightly different um, gamified area, which is um, the referrals space. Um, so we're going to take a look at Ticker's referral journey. OK. Um, and just uh, so Ticker is a, um, a kind of green investment platform. Um, you can also donate and offset your carbon emissions there. It's hugely popular at the moment um, with us at Pulse, but also um, in the broader community, it's, it's doing it's doing very well. So um, credit to these guys. So we're going through the referrals and rewards journey here on Ticker. Uh, we've got a really vibrant graphic there, uh, typical of the brand, uh, very colourful. And then it's just um, saying that ten pound we get ten pounds and two trees planted um, if we successfully invite a friend. Um, so we're going through the usual journey here where we can share it in WhatsApp in this instance. Um, so we could send referral link as well as some pre-populated text. Um, and then we can kind of see how many um, invites we've sent so far and also um, how many trees that we've planted off the back of those invites, um, as well as there's a kind of counter of the, um, the impact that Tick has had so far on, on the entire community. Um, which is um, kind of quantifying the, the extent of their success, which I guess further encourages um, usage of the app and, and, and um, sharing links. Um, so just taking a look at that, um, Ali, what, what do you think of um, that journey? And, and um, do you think that's a successful case of gamification? Yeah, I, I think it's a, a perfect example of um, harnessing your, your true brand values, but also elevating that with um, really, really strong visual cues that will make the users want to engage more. And the whole point of gamification within this space is to try and uh, tap into any um, customer's basic intrinsic motivation in order to do something. And I think having that lovely little illustration there where you can fill up with trees with your referrals, um, again, that's playing into sort of the, the goal gradient and the, the some of the behavioral science around milestone setting. And I think what that will do, people, go to Ticker because they love what Ticker represent. The green um, the green investment, um, and this is just a visualized way of seeing your impact. And I think that'll be really powerful amongst its users. Yeah, um, and, and I think uh, Bunk were also very good in this space where they had a very similar um, kind of virtual forest thing going on, which is a really nice way to, to just see how you're, um, you're building up your your impact um, and Ticker used it elsewhere as well. Um, we saw we saw a glimpse of it there, where we saw the um, the impact that the apps had so far um, on emissions and, and those kind of things. But um, if you're if you're using the app, you can also see um, how much your um, investments have had an impact um, and how much your um, you know if you if you're on the off offset subscription, I mean you can really visualize it by tons of carbon um, trees saved and these kind of things. So it almost seems like there's there's a really good relationship between um kind of uh quantifying things and, and gamification it's a very simple form of it but um really effective i think in this sense yeah and i think it it does it in the right way it just softly celebrates um the fact that the user is making a difference and there is nothing better than to tap into anyone's motivation to create impact than by showing them the impact that they've already created yeah for sure so so from that um would you then use um this approach uh, in some of your designs yeah, absolutely. It, it has a place. Um, I think it's, it is that perfect scenario where because they're doing something that is fundamentally good mm -hmm. and ethically sound, mm -hmm. this is something that can be used to multiply that benefit. Yeah. Obviously, that same technique can be used in the reverse and to make things uh, maybe slightly more insidious than some of the darker behavior patterns. But yeah, I think um, what they're doing is fantastic and it wouldn't surprise me if they keep going from strength to strength based on functionality that they have. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think um, we've also seen um, 
you know, TikTok is a very easy example because they're they're doing good. But we've seen examples where just simply storing where your referrals, how many you've got, no matter mm-hmm. how much money you've earned, um, sometimes that's enough just to um, incentivize um, further engagement with it, I think. Um, so it doesn't always have to be this kind of full effect. Um, but it, I, th- I guess this is the one of the nicest examples of it because they can play around with the visualizations as well. Yeah, absolutely. So now we're going to take a look at um, a more traditional um, use of gamification, I suppose, which is um, within savings. Um, and it's going to be within the chip app, um, which is also a, a very good one and, and um, a popular one in Pulse. So already you can kind of see the um, playful nature of it with those emojis. Um, and right, very prominent, we're seeing um, kind of saving streaks, um, how much we're saving, huge uh, kind of very vibrant graphics um, and uh, saving predictions as well. Um, which we can slide through, which I guess kind of further incentivizes as use um, because it's saying where we could get to and, and increasing um, the prediction levels, I guess, would um, it just f- further kind of fills your, your progress in there. Um, and we can see the, the different kind of um, scales at the bottom we've got. Um, you know, we can see a progress bar on each of them. Um, so it really shows us our, our progress along the way. So obviously there's a huge emphasis um, on saving there and how um, gamification has been used there. Um, how effective do you think um, these features are when, when um, kind of trying to achieve saving goals and those kind of things? I think the um, projected saving part is a, is a massive um, motivator really, being able to see what, um, you know, almost like a, a certain outcome is going to be gives um, the end customer a much better idea of what they can actually achieve with their actions. Um, and just simply having that sales streak, sales, the saving streak yeah, yeah, yeah. within that um, allows them to, uh, you know, have something to hold on to, to keep. They're going to want to do that. Um, mm-hmm. They're going to want to keep saving uh, with each of those days that pass. And from uh, the word of mouth, um, people that use Chip, everyone loves it and they believe it. It allows them to save more and more frequently. Mm-hmm. Um, it's actually really interesting that that, that um, kind of saving streak thing, um, and it's very similar to a, a feature that we've seen um, from Yolt, um, who now released a very kind of savings focused uh, account. Um, and they were on the, the show a few weeks back, and they were saying how um, the research shows that these small streaks really um, encourage that positive reinforcement by, by doing small wins, um, you increase engagement um, as well as savings. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I, from my own personal experience, I use and have used um, the task um, app Todoist for what must be the best part of a decade now. And yeah. I just can't let go of the fact that, that every single day you you build up a streak and you you get um, what they call karma points. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it's completely irrational, but I can't let that go and I won't use anything else. Fair enough. <laughs> um, so, so there's the uh, kind of casual language there, um, kind of gamified language as well, stuff like you're on a roll. Um, um, do you think that that potentially um, alienates some of the younger, sorry, some of the um, older demographics um, who aren't so keen on this kind of um, slightly um, more juvenile um, and kind of gamey uh, approach? I think the approach is very much valid. Mm-hmm. I think you're right about the the tone of voice, but that you know is all to do with how the brand wants to sell itself and who it wants to sell itself to. Mm-hmm. There is definitely um, a lot of work to be done in designing um, apps that are incredibly useful, but for the older generation. I think this comes down to just purely um, tone of voice and, and branding and whether or not uh, they feel they can exclude that. But I think it would lose quite a bit of its charm if it wasn't colloquial and and now going. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, and I actually think that um, a lot of the older generations aren't put off by that kind of thing. Um, I've not researched that, but um, that's, <laughs> that's my hunch. Um, and I, I, I think there's a case, um, I don't know what you think, but the the um, kind of behavioural science behind um, gamification and rewards, I imagine that also remains. So you could get rid of the language, um, not that you should in this instance, um, mm-hmm. but for, um, you know, for apps like, say, um, Marcus or or um, aimed at a slightly older generation, um, you could probably keep the behavioral stuff, but lose some of the um, explicitly gamified um, components of it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when it boils down to it, all it is is it's applying an engaging metric to something that otherwise isn't engaging. So Mm -hmm. all you need to do is tailor that to 
the kind of people that you're trying to target and the people that are going to be using your product. And it should be more successful than not applying any gamification at all. Yeah, for sure. Um, so you might have touched on it earlier. Um, we saw some enthusiasm there, but could you tell us about what your favorite um, financial service app using um, gamification is? Oh, it is interesting because there are quite a few of them. You mentioned Yolt earlier. I've used Yolt for, for quite a few years now and I, I find it incredibly beneficial. Um, and their savings thing is great. Obviously, it's very similar to what we've seen in the, the show as well. But um, I think purely from a design standpoint and for its sheer simplicity, um, Monzo's highest rated feature amongst customers, so the thing that resonates most to customers, is the um, real-time notifications, right? And there's a tiny bit of gamification behind that because they use haptics, they use some sound, they use some motion, all of the things that just make it a little bit more joyful to, to make a purchase. And this yeah. is just something that is so incredibly simple. Anyone could do this. It just sits within sort of a brand playbook, tone of voice, and it just makes that instantly more appealing. And it costs Monzo absolutely nothing to do. Mm. That's that's a that's a really good point actually, um, and I think um, as well it seems like the the Monzo budgeting um, feature, which is so um, so fundamental to to the product offering now, um, is also kind of the center point. That's where you land. You see where you are in your budget, um, and it it's kind of goes to show how it's clearly a popular feature. It's clearly been tested well. Um, so it, it's it's a small case of gamification. Um, you know, it's not a lot of fun, but it it is even just having that metric, something to aim for, something to challenge yourself with. Um, that's, uh, um, I said it's a testament to um, the power of gamification um, and uh, how it's been f increasingly featured uh, more and more these days. Absolutely. It's a game I lose more often than not, the Monza yeah. budget. <laughs> for sure. Um, <laughs> so so finally, when it comes to um, a person's money, um, what would you advise designers um, bear in mind um, when des designing a financial product, I appreciate this isn't um, exactly related to um, gamification or necessarily related to gamification. But um, what would you what would you give some advice there for? That you should never design a feature with the gamification as the starting point or the reason to design a feature. The feature should be certainly when it comes to designing financial apps entirely functional and then you find those ways to make it more engaging and you know a little bit more casual and less serious etc but that fundamental functionality and the clarity of what the function is there to represent do has to stay in place yeah okay great um well it's been great chatting ali um have you got um any projects working on the, at the moment that you'd like to um call out or a particular um channels that you'd like to mention yeah, sure. Um, I'll give a shout out to um, the minimum lovable brand work that we've done here in the past few months. Um, fantastic uh, brochure on how to apply um, that minimum lovable element to any brand that you create uh, for financial products. So a huge shout out to our head of design, Will Jones, and uh, our design lead, Matt Skip, for that. Um, and in terms of any contact details, anyone is very welcome to find me on LinkedIn and slide into the DMs there um, if they want to talk to me about anything else. Great. Uh, thanks so much, Ali. Um, um, that was a really good discussion. Um, so you can see these journeys that we've shown today um, on pulse.11fs.com, as well as thousands of others, um, fintech and banking journeys from, from across the globe, um, benchmarking local regions, as well as uh, the kind of best in class um, from around the world. So thanks so much, everyone, and um, tune in next week.